Good morning, church. It's good to see you all out and nice and talky. I hate to stop it, but oh well. I got the stink eye, so. <laughs> the angel said, don't be afraid, Mary. God is honoring you. Look, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. That is Luke chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. Welcome, everyone, to Bradford Church. We're glad that you're here with us today. We appreciate your presence, and uh, we're excited that uh, we have this opportunity to be together, especially during this Christmas season. It's always uh, special when we can come together as a church family and sing uh, Christmas carols and just enjoy the season and all the activities that go with that. I hope you picked up one of our bulletins on your way in. Uh, inside there is a schedule of activities, all the things that are taking place here at the church uh, there, through the end of the year. And we just want to uh, bring your attention to a few things. Uh, first of all, uh, the Faith Promise pledges, uh, we don't close that down until the end of the year. So we do still have some forms on the back there beside the offering plate. If you still would like to make a pledge regarding our missions for 2024, you're welcome to do so. Uh, there's some fellas going to the Kiowa uh, Men and Boys Quarterly Supper Meeting tomorrow night, and they're departing from the church at 4.30. If you'd like to go, be here by 4.30. If you have any questions, Bill Amberg or Ron Hanning will be happy to answer those for you. Uh, if you volunteered to purchase a gift for a senior citizen, uh, that program that Susie uh, will oversees, you must have that here and wrapped by this Wednesday. So... If that's a commitment you made, please make sure you have those, those gifts here Wednesday wrapped, ready to go. So appreciate you taking care of that. Uh, we are having our choir practice uh, every Sunday following second service. So if you're a part of the choir, uh, they'd love for you to meet right over here immediately after church is over so that you can uh, practice uh, some of the songs that will be taking place over the course of the season. The last... Uh, uh, the thing that I'd like to draw your attention to is in your bulletin is a Christmas schedule, and uh, there's, there's just uh, some things you need to be aware of regarding uh, some dates and, and how we're handling a few things during the Christmas time, and so be sure to check that out. And then finally, uh, I hope you plan to, and if you didn't plan to, you can still do so. Uh, there's an opportunity today following second services to have uh, pictures with Santa Claus. And uh, this is uh, a free uh, uh, blessing to you as an uh, uh, opportunity you might have for your children, your grandchildren, for you. So if you just want to come over and visit with Santa Claus, uh, you're welcome to do so. That will be taking place immediately after second service. And so uh, just hope you uh, will bring your young ones over and uh, your families or couples, however you want to do that, we would love uh, to have that opportunity together. So just wanted to share that with you. That's all the announcements I have. And we're going to begin our worship time this morning. Our worship leader is Brother Bill Amberger, and we're going to turn things over to him. So. All righty. Um, our worship video uh, is called A Strange Way to Save the World. And I really like this song, and I think you will too. We've done it before uh, by the group for him. I um, ask that you be standing and sing along or just listen to the words. And, of course, remain standing, and we'll, we'll close with prayer. Never in a million lies Would he have dreamed of Bethlehem And standing at the manger He saw with his own eyes The message from the angel come alive And Joseph said, why? Just a simple man of trade Why him with all the rulers in the world? Why him inside this stable filled with hay? Why her? She's just an ordinary girl Second guess what angels have to say. 
But Joseph knew the reason love had to reach so far. And as he held the Savior in his arms, he must have thought, why me? I'm just a simple man of trade. Why him with all the rulers in the an ordinary girl And now I'm not a one to second guess what angels have to say But this is such a strange way to say the Such a strange way to say the word. This is such a strange way. Such a strange way. A strange way to say the Father, this morning we thank you for another day and another opportunity to be here. And Father, we just pray we'll be blessed by being with those of like precious faith. And it's so important to be part of a church family. And we thank you for that, that you created the church for us to all gather and share and, and learn. And Father, we just pray today as we go through the service, our worship is fitting to you. We pray as always that if there's anybody here with us today who needed to give their life to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they do so before it is eternally too late. And Lord, we look at the world around us and realize there's a lot of things going on and a lot of things have been going on for centuries, but uh, Father, we just all feel as Christians that maybe that time is approaching where you call us home. Nonetheless, we are called to be ready. And Father, we thank you for that hope that we have. And as we enter this Christmas season, let us be thankful and grateful as always that you seem fit to bring us your son and on our behalf. We thank you and we love you, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. O Come All Ye Faithful, number 249 will be our uh, next hymn, number 249. We'll be singing a fair number of Christmas songs till, uh, till Christmas time, and this is going to be one of them. O Come All Ye Faithful, first, second, and third, because there is this for first, second, and third.
we all sound really good this morning. You do a lot of times. We're just more of you, I think. Sound really good. Um, our communion hymn is going to be number 324. When I survey the wondrous cross, and like I say many times, I get tired of me saying it, but I think this is probably the most, if not the, the mo- one of the most, if not the most important time of our services when we take that time to remember what the Lord has done for us through the, some people call it the sacrament, the, we give it the Holy Supper, Lord's Supper, communion, all means the same thing to me, it's just a very sacred time. As we prepare for that mentally and physically, we're going to sing the first, third, and fourth verse of number 324, when I survey the wondrous cross, and Jeff, I believe you have the uh, meditation. Maestro? <laughs> After missionary Jonathan Gofford <coughs> had spoken in a chapel in southern China, a man asked to talk to him. He said, I have heard you speak three times, and you always have the same theme. You always speak about Jesus Christ. Why? The missionary replied, Sir, before answering your question, let me ask you, what did you have for dinner today? Rice, said the man. What did you have yesterday? The same thing. (coughs) And what do you expect to eat tomorrow? Rice, of course. It gives me strength. I could not do without it. The man hesitated as if looking for a strong word. Then he added, (coughs) Sit, or sir, it is my very life. The missionary responded quickly, What you have said of rice, Jesus, is to our soul. He is the rice or bread of life. As we (coughs) partake of the bread and wine at communion, we're reminded that Jesus poured out his life so we could have life. His blood shed, his body broken to save us from our sins and bring us to eternal life. (coughs) Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whosoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, (coughs) those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never respect them, reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will, will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. (coughs) 
Let's pray. Father God, as we come to this point in our service when we are called to a time of remembrance, Father, remembering the great act of love that you sent your son to do in our stead, Father, to pay that ransom that we were unable to pay, Father. We know that he came as a baby as we celebrate the birth this month, Father, but thank you, Father, for that birth. We thank you for his ministry here upon this earth. We thank you for that death that he endured upon the cross of Calvary, Father, and also the resurrection that gives hope to our lives. So, Father, we thank you this morning for the body of Christ represented by the loaf this day. We thank you for the cup representing the precious shed blood for the sins of all mankind, Father. We celebrate and we give thanks this morning to your son. We pray this in his name. Amen. Standing and sing the doxology. That's the reason he's able to get by.
Same nose. Okay, page uh, 590 will be our decision hymn this morning. I just learned that uh, we have special music this morning, and we're excited about that and appreciate that. Uh, Martha Prophet is going to share a special with us, and I'm going to invite her to come on up and do that right now. Martha? Don't worry, Shane, I don't get nervous or anything. <laughs> don't make it worse or anything. I do, yeah. <laughs> That's all right. These things happen, don't they? Yeah. All right. One last thing that I should have mentioned. Uh, I just want to issue a reminder that next uh, Sunday together, we will have a church Christmas dinner. This is just a simple carry-in dinner. The church is going to provide turkey and ham, and uh, we're just looking forward to a special day of gathering. Uh, as a church family, everyone is invited. We'd love to have you come and be a part of that. And uh, we also have a special activity for children specifically, but also their families to work with them as they will be making gingerbread nativity scenes. And so we're excited about that. And uh, so just something for the children and families to enjoy. But again, open to everybody. Jeannie, am I? Have, no, did I? I did not say. I thought I said chicken. I quit. I just, I just quit. It does, it does taste like chicken. It, it is chicken and ham, and I knew that. And you know, when I said it, I heard chicken. But, but anyway, that being said, we are. We want carry in. It's a potluck, so just uh, people bring in whatever they want to bring in. That'd be great. So, look. Oh, no way. <laughs> well, we'll just call it retirement or, you know, something like that. Go ahead and take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That will be our text today. Your Bibles, Bible apps, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll be referring to uh, the remainder of that chapter. We looked at the first part of it last week together, and uh, now we'll consider the remainder of that. And, of course, you know, in vocal music, you probably understand that harmony offsets uh, the melody in order to make a very beautiful or elegant sound. And this blending of voices is really satisfying to hear, at least it is for me. 
Uh, and this concept gives us the idea, actually, of how the church is supposed to work. And we don't always have the same job. We don't approach every task from the same direction. But when we do things right, there is this blending of the efforts in the church and a tandem quality to our work that actually leads to an outcome that is greater than what we would be able to achieve on our own. And so this is what Paul is talking about in 1 Corinthians today, the text we're looking at. And he's talking about how the church, as a body of believers, uh, we all have our own part to play, our, our own job to fulfill within the church family. The, you may not be uh, like everyone else, uh, but that doesn't diminish the importance of your place in the body of Christ. Uh, just listen to what Paul says in verse 15 of our text. It says, If the foot says, Because I am not the hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any less the part a part of the body. And the same goes for the ear, the eye, the nose, the head, the feet, even the big toe. But Paul says in verse 18, God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. This is the way that God intends for the church to be. This is the way that God intends for the church to work together. We're, we're not just a random group of individuals, each going our own way, each one doing their very own thing. We are intended to be a unit, a unified whole, where we rejoice together, but where we also suffer together. As I consider the church today, as I look at the church today, I just don't get the impression of that this is a collection of Christians who are all cut from the same cloth or who are shaped by the same cookie cutter. Uh, and with all this variety among the membership, we have managed to survive through some tough times at various points in the history of the church, and we also continue to thrive as we look ahead to the future that God has planned out for us. So with this in mind today, I want to talk about what it means for us to actually be the body of Christ, right? You've heard us referred to as the body of Christ, but what does that actually mean? Have you ever considered that? Have you ever thought about that? Uh, this, uh, this concept as we worship together, as we fellowship together, as we serve together in ministry, we are the body of Christ. So here are three things that I think we need to remember about everyone in this room today as individuals and that we need to remember about what it means that when we say that we are a part of the body of Christ, that we are a part of a body of believers. First of all, this morning, uh, very uh, important, it's simple, it's just this, we respect one another, okay? We respect one another. And I mean that we actually respect the differences among us. We understand that the eye is not the ear and the ear is not the hand, and sometimes we approach things in a different manner, but we also need to understand that there are uh, different uh, roles within the church, different responsibilities, different offices within the church, and each of those responsibilities, each of those offices come with their own set of criteria or things that need to be taken care of. Each person who fulfills one role will approach it in a manner that might be different from someone else in the way that they would approach that role in uh, specifically or uh, a completely different role, if you will. And in verses 27 through 31, Paul breaks down these various uh, offices or, or gifts within the church. And he's not only talking about the local church at Corinth, as the letter is written to, but he's really talking also about the greater church, okay? And he says there are apostles, there's prophets, there's teachers, there's workers of miracles and those with the gift of healing, those who help, those who administrate, those who speak in other languages. I might call that speaking in tongues. And when Paul's saying this, uh, he says, yes, there's a different uh, kinds of gifts, different job descriptions that we perform. 
And we are not carbon copies of anyone else. However, rather than consider ourselves better than those uh, with a different job than what we have, maybe let's choose instead to respect and even embrace those differences that exist among us. This is why Paul says in verse 25, there may be no division in the body, but that the members have the same care for one another. You may not, for example, be inclined to work over in our children's ministry uh, because maybe they're a little bit louder than what it would be over here if you were over here working. Uh, and, and you can respect and appreciate those, though, right, that work in that area and be thankful that they are doing that. Uh, you may not be inclined to work uh, in the kitchen during one of our fellowships, or you may not be inclined to sing in a choir or be a part of uh, the cleanup crew of the church here. Uh, and rather than us picking apart those who do, we can choose instead to appreciate and honor and respect their efforts. Let's do this, and let's do it with absolutely everyone. Now, that brings me to the second idea that I want us to remember this morning, and that's this, that we feel for each other. This is so important, that we feel for each other. This means that we understand each other well enough to recognize that, uh, and, and that there, there's challenges around uh, each one of us. If you looked around, you, they, there's people who are facing challenges at the present time. And being able to understand that, to see that, and identify with that, well, this is called empathy, right? You've heard that word before. Uh, we all claim to have it, but we are not always so quick to show it. And that's a shame. Paul identifies this as an essential element within the life of the church. This past week, she's not even here, so this will be all right. Uh, Sherry Williamson had surgery on her broken wrist. I might be in big trouble if she was here, wouldn't I? It could be. Uh, you know, and we were having choir practice last week uh, after second service, and Sherry is, of course, uh, talking about the fact that we are, the choir is going to sing Wednesday night during the Christmas carol hymn sing, and and Sherry made the comment that I might not be here depending on how I feel after my surgery. And so I thought to myself, well, as far as I know, that's an outpatient procedure. <laughs> and uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she would have said to me, well, I, I'm thinking about that I might have to be home recovering. But I don't get it. I mean, uh, what does your wrist surgery have to do with a hymn sing, right? You, you don't sing with your wrist. You, you sing with your voice, right? Uh, I, I don't see why she couldn't be here. Now, she might say to that, well, I might still be in a lot of pain, to which I would say, well, the wrist might be in pain, but your voice should be fine. <laughs> There's no reason why you can't be there. Now, I am joking, of course. She did skip Wednesday night, by the way. But this is a principle that actually needs to be at work within the church. With very few exceptions, if one uh, part of the body is in severe pain, then the rest of the body is less than fully functional, if not completely incapacitated. If one part of the body hurts, the whole body hurts. This is the point that Paul is making. Look at verse 25. So that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. We need to learn to feel for one another. Now, Unfortunately, this quality is more rare than you might imagine, this ability to be able to see the world through the eyes of another person. Uh, there, may, uh, there are many who can't see beyond their own personal experiences, beyond their own limited understanding of the world. And, of course, this leads to what? This leads to people being uh, judgmental. It leads to people being condescending. It leads to people being apathetic towards others. We've all heard the saying about walking a mile in another person's shoes, haven't we? Before you judge, 
before you appoint yourself as anyone's superior, uh, you take a moment and do everything you can to see what it is that they see. Do everything you can to feel what it is that they feel. God expects nothing less from those who are in his church. Now this brings me to the third and final thing this morning that I want you to remember. And this, this is really important. We need each other. Amen? We need each other. Just think, just think. Now because we have a wide range of ages here, I'm going to go back to the 60s and 70s and 80s, but you just think about all the bands from those eras uh, who saw their careers in far too soon simply because they couldn't get along with one another. And so what happened? The band breaks up, doesn't it, right? They couldn't fully grasp how much they needed one another. One member of the band begins uh, to consider themselves indispensable, and the rest of the band decides it will just simply be easier to go our separate ways. And so like the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel and Creedence Clearwater Revival or Pink Floyd or the Eagles or the Police, uh, even the Beatles, even the Beatles who sang the song, All You Need Is Love, they broke up, didn't they? Now, I could go on and on, and it just doesn't happen in the music business. It also happens in sports, like the time that Dallas Cowboys owner Jerry Jones fired Jimmy Johnson after he had won two consecutive Super Bowls. Not even Texas was big enough for these two giant egos to be able to coexist. Or when Pat Riley, former coach of the L.A. Lakers, talked about having one of the most talented group of players in all of NBA history, but they were all too self-important to recognize their need for one another. And Riley called this the disease of me. And he said, the disease of me leads to the defeat of us. This also happens in businesses. It happens even in families. And now what I'm saying to you is let's do everything we can, let's commit ourselves to doing everything that we are able to not let something like that happen here in the church. Amen? None of us are more important than all of us. We need each other. This is why Paul says in verse 21, And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Then he goes on to say in verse 22, On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary, and those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor, and our less presentable members become much more presentable. Now, there are certainly within the church who stand up front here each and every week and are a little bit more visible than the majority of, of everyone else. And, and so we are, by necessity, the most visible members of the body. It just has to be that way. It just works out that way. But I also want everyone who stands up here to understand that even though they might be front and center each week, uh, we may be the most visible, but we also may very well be the most dispensable. You see, those of you who work behind the scenes in those low glamour, low recognition ministries, you are actually the ones that we cannot live without. You, we, we can't do without you. And so we should not forget at all how much, as a body of believers, we need each other. Now this really brings me to the conclusion of my message this morning. I just want to share a few more things uh, before we close. I, I specifically want to bring one thing to your attention. I'm going to share with you the most essential members of the body. You see, in verses 27 and 28, Paul lists eight offices, gifts, uh, areas of ministry. He lists the apostles, prophets, teachers, miracle workers, those who can heal, those who help others. Pay attention to that one. 
And those who are gifted in administration, pay attention to that one as well. And then those who speak in tongues. And he talks about the limited outreach of each group, or at least of six of the group. Not all are apostles, not all are prophets, not all are teachers, not all are workers in miracles, not all have the gift of healing, not all speak in tongues or interpret tongues. That's six of the eight. But then he says in verse 31 this, but earnestly desire the greater gifts. Earnestly desire the greater gifts. Well, what are those greater gifts? Which ones are they? Well, they're the two that he didn't include in the above list of limitations. The first one is those who help. Or another way to say it is those who serve. And the second one is those who have the gift of administration, or rather another way we could say that, those who lead. These are the greater of the gifts. Not speaking uh, in, in another language, uh, not uh, performing miracles. Serving and leading is much more important than those things, right? All the gifts, all the offices, all the ministries in the church, uh, of all of them, these are the most important, those who are willing to serve and those who are willing to lead. Anyone who has ever done either of these things knows about the many long and thankless hours that each requires, this serving and leading. And so in order for us as a body of believers here at Bradford to actually work and strive to bring glory to our Lord Jesus Christ, well, then we need to recognize, in fact, we need to embrace the differences that may exist between us or among us and recognize that each of us have a job to do and they're not the same job. We need to be willing to put our hearts on the line. We need to be able to feel for one another. We need to be able to weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. Why is this? It's because we need each other more than what we realize. Amen? Amen? And so as we do strive here at Bradford Church to be the body of Christ, together there are two greater gifts that we are called to pursue. And so may we each find, as God leads, an opportunity to serve or an opportunity to lead. May we find those in our lives so that we as a church, as Christ's church may continue to move forward into the future that God has planned out for us. Amen? That's my message this morning. We're going to share an invitation hymn. Oh, before, well, let's go ahead and do the invitation hymn. And then, Shane, did you get everything ready for Martha? Okay. So we'll do an invitation hymn, extend this opportunity to anyone here who can respond, who would choose to respond, I should say. And uh, here's this conversation, this call about I have a role to play. I have a part to play within the church. I'm ready to, to be a, a part of the body of believers. Maybe you need to give your life to Jesus Christ to begin that for us today. Or maybe you uh, need to give yourself back to him. You kind of wandered away. Uh, or you're just looking for a place to serve. You're looking for a church home. Uh, we would love to have you be a part of the Bradford Church family. Whatever the case may be this morning, we extend to you this invitation and hope and pray that you do respond. Let's stand and sing the first and last verse of I'll Live for Him.
Expecting child, they searched the end to find a place for you were coming soon. There was no room for them to stay, so in a manger filled with hay, God's only son was born. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said, you'll find him in a manger bed, Emmanuel and Savior, Star shone bright up in the east to Bethlehem. The wise men three came many miles and journeyed long for you. And to the place at which you were, the frankincense and golden myrrh they gave to you. This baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you. That rugged cross was my cross too. Still every breath you drew was hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I appreciate that very much. Great way to end the service, isn't it? Uh, well, thanks again for coming out today. We're so glad to see each and every one of you. And uh, just remember, uh, in just a little bit, uh, I, I'm not sure if he's here now, but Santa's going to be next door. And uh, we want you to enjoy that opportunity and I encourage you to stick around. And we will try to move you through as quickly as possible. And uh, and if uh, there's just going to be quick snapshots, uh, you know, uh, we're not going to uh, uh, spend a half hour on every person just getting it just right, you know. 
Uh, Santa's going to look good. It's up to you to look good, too, okay? <laughs> so just, just, just letting you know. Just letting you know. All right. Anything else that might need to be said before we leave, Bill? Okay. Okay. A meeting with the elders. What's that now? Okay. All right. Martha? Patricia Nichols? Nicholson. Nichols. Mick Nichols. Okay. We got we got several versions here, but <laughs> Patricia McNichols. Got it. Okay. He did. Okay, what's what's your dad's name? Morrison. John Morrison having heart surgery on Wednesday. Jamie Cottle had his surgery uh, a couple few days ago, Bill, Friday. Okay, so uh, he still has something else that has to be done. He has to have a defibrillator put in, and so let's continue to keep him in prayers. He was, uh, he, he's in, been in pretty serious condition, and so uh, he's got great spirits, and uh, he's, yeah, I think he's going to do great, but uh, all this has to happen before he comes home. So you keep him and Miranda and the rest of the family in your prayers, if you would, okay? Any others? All right. Well, let's stand together. I'm going to ask Brother Don if he would care to come up and close with prayer. Do you mind doing that, Don? Dear precious Heavenly Father and precious Jesus, we do at the wake want to give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory for our time that we've uh, been able to join here together and yes lord we are the body of christ we are the church your church and we serve together and uh, lord god we want to keep the unity we want to every each and every day help uh, each other along in our spiritual walk for that's what the church is all about we thank you lord jesus for uh, going to the cross and and suffering and dying there and giving us a reason to be the church but it's all about you jesus we certainly thank you for Martha's song this morning. It's the, what brings the Christmas season all together and helps us to appreciate it more and more. So each and every day, Lord God, we face challenges, we face problems, and we need each other if we're going to get through those and get through them in a godly way. And each day we pray for mercy and grace and forgiveness, for we know that's the only way we're ever going to get to heaven. And that's our desire and our goal, to spend forever and ever with you in that perfect place you have planned. Keep us headed in that right direction, Lord, with your wisdom and strength. And uh, we pray these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Amen.